this week on Engage the Sage. Hi everyone, I'm Don Saucer. Welcome to this week's episode of Engage the Sage. This week I'm going to tell you about a great activity that you can have your students do at the end of the semester, and it's a great activity for you to do at the end of the semester too. The end of the semester is a great time to look back on the content that you learned. It's a great time to look at the skills and the trivia and the tidbits that you've picked up through the course. It's a great time to think about the connections that you've made to the other people in the course. At the end of all of my classes, I ask my students to reflect on the class, and think about the top 10 things that they learned that semester. This could be content, this could be trivia, this could be things about themselves, these could be things about me, and I invite them to think broadly across the entire of the semester, not just the last bit. And I love it when they think of things that allow them to infuse their personality and their sense of humor into their answers. So I have them create these top 10 lists, these top 10 things that they've learned that semester. Sometimes I have them do it individually, sometimes I have them do it in groups, but they always create this list of the top 10 things that they're taking away from my class when the class ends. I think this is a great opportunity to provide to my students because it allows them to look back and see all the value that they're going to get from the class, all the things that made their effort that semester worthwhile. So at the end, you have something to show for the time and work that you've put in. And I love to read their responses. It is so gratifying at the end of the semester when I'm tired and I'm worn down for the four months of teaching to look back and see what they picked up, to see the lessons that they've learned, the messages that they've taken away, the, the trivia, the, the creative stuff they picked up along the way, and the connections that they've made. I find that reading the top 10 things that my students learned this semester is a really gratifying and inspirational way to get ready for the next semester. Because at the end of the semester, I'm tired. I'm wondering how am I gonna be able to do this again when the next semester rolls around? When I see the content and the experiences that my students have learned in my class, it really gets me ready for that next semester. I absolutely recommend at the end of the semester, you have your students sit down and write the top 10 things that they learned in your class. But I also recommend that you do this too. Prior to the semester, I didn't write my top 10 things that I learned formally. I reflect on my, my teaching. I think about the things that I want to do more of. I think about the things I want to do less of. I think about the things that I work on. But I never sat down and wrote a top 10 list. And I'm doing that now. And I'm sharing it with you. And I'm sharing it with my students this semester. Because it's a really good way to connect on our experiences that we just had. So to all of you and to the 300 students, that I had in my undergraduate classes, my graduate classes, and my undergraduate lab, and my research lab. These are the things that I learned with you this semester. So number 10, I learned that teaching this semester was hard. Teaching in a high flex model, having students in class, having students at home over Zoom, not knowing who was gonna show up, having to manage the chat and the online modalities and all that, it was a hard semester. That's the first thing I learned. Teaching was hard this semester. Number nine, I learned that making connections with my students over Zoom is hard. I tried really hard to bring it in my online lectures. I tried really hard in my, in my synchronous online courses to make connections with my students over Zoom. But lecturing into that void or seeing the people with their, with their videos off, I don't know why the videos are off. I'm not going to mandate those videos to be on. But it was just hard to make those connections. And I tried really hard, and I'm still learning. Number eight, I learned that lecturing into the abyss actually isn't that bad. And one of the things that made it not that bad for me is I really broke my lectures down into smaller segments so that when I was recording at home by myself without an audience, I was able to streamline and really tell cool, cohesive stories in 10 minutes or less to my students a lot. And it actually was more fun than I thought it would be. Number seven, I learned that all of those lecture segments that I video recorded, I get to see all of my flaws. I get to see that I get excited and talk too fast. I get to see that I mumble. I get to see that I make grammatical mistakes, which really kind of bugs me. I get to see that I sometimes just butcher a sentence and I've got some stuff to work on and I get to work on my articulation and I get to work on speaking more slowly and more clearly. Number six, I learned that I miss the energy and the enthusiasm and the passion of an in-person class. I miss connecting to my students. I miss getting that immediate feedback of their nonverbal responses when I say something completely confusing. And I know that it is completely confusing because I can see that none of them understood it. I miss the conversations that we have that I didn't plan that come from a student questions. I miss going on an appropriate tangent on the whiteboard. Um, so I'm looking to return to the face-to-face -face class sometime soon because I really miss it. Number five, and any of you who know me, you agree with this, I learned, well, I knew this before, but I need to move. One of the things that happens with me working at home is I sit in this spot all 
day. I cannot sit in this spot all day. I am restless. So I'm hitting pause on Zoom meetings. I'm getting up. I'm shadow boxing. I'm doing yoga. I'm walking the dog with my family and wife all the time. Um, I, I need to move. Sometimes I just get to get down on the floor, do some yoga or some push-ups in the middle of the day because I get restless. Number four, I learned that I am not going to get all of my stuff done. My to-do list gets longer every single day. I cross stuff off, but then more stuff takes its place. And I'm learning or I'm trying to learn to give myself some grace to understand you're not going to get it all done, but it's going to be fine. And I hope you take away that lesson too, because our to-do lists are far too long. Number three, I learned that I work with amazing people. I learned, for instance, from my principals of college teaching class, I learned how to conduct Uptown Funk from someone in the band. Um, I learned how to talk to my kids about sex. I, I learned about concrete and building and writing leads in journalism. I learned about wonderful things from the people that I work with. I learned from my undergraduates in my psychology prejudice class that there are students that are willing to take on really hard topics and to work towards social justice and racial equality and racial, and racial equity and that they're willing to take on the challenge of being an anti-racist. I learned from my research group that we have amazing and fascinating research ideas and the skills to test the hypotheses that drive those ideas. And I am really looking forward to sharing all of our thoughts with the world coming up. And I learned from my general psychology students that even though we might be asynchronously connected, that you all are awesome. And I'm so thankful for the reaching out that you've done and the connections that we've been able to make because there is a lot of life being lived in this semester and there's a lot of challenge out there and you are navigating it with poise and grace. And I am so honored and privileged to work with all of you. Number two, I learned that especially this semester, but I think always in teaching, empathy is more important than rigor. This semester, more so than any others, I structured my course assignments and policies to focus on supporting my students' learning and their success. I understood that we were facing unprecedented challenges, and I offered more opportunities to pass in work late and to meet my students where they are and to work with them on assignments and to give them latitude than I ever have before. And this has made me a better teacher. And I'm really, really excited to have learned the lesson that empathy is more important for rigor. And this is one I'm gonna keep with me. And the number one thing that I learned this semester is even with all the stuff and even with all the difficulties, I learned, and I knew this before, but it was completely reinforced, I love to teach and I love my students. I need fulfillment. I need to feel like what I'm doing is valuable and working with all of you across all of my classes, that happened. I love to teach and I love you all as my students. This was an amazing semester for me in many ways. It was a very hard semester for me in many ways, but I learned that there is absolute value in what we're doing together and I wouldn't trade that for the world. So thank you for listening to the top 10 things that I learned myself this semester. I highly recommend you give the students in your classes the opportunity to reflect on the top 10 things that they learned. And I really recommend that you sit down at the end of your semester and think about what you learned. It's a really, really worthwhile and valuable experience. I am excited to read about what you and your students learned in the comments below. Thank you for joining us this week on Engage the Sage. Please like, subscribe, sign up for notifications, share us on social media, and we will see you next time on Engage the Sage.